When did the United States stop caring about winning? When did the USA decide the best was not good enough anymore and instead we were going to send over a team that might not make the NBA finals? These are the questions that have been asked as Team USA has had an up and down Olympic experience so far. And really, as we watch a team that contains some NBA role players, while American stars such as Zion Williamson, John Morant, LaMelo Ball, and Trey Young sit at home, we have to ask ourselves, why? And logically, there are just two possible options. One, the players no longer care enough to represent Team USA. Or two, some of the top talent Team USA could have been using has been banned, blackballed, whatever. They have not been allowed into the Team USA system. This is what All Star Trey Young has recently said about playing on Team USA. Paris 2024 Olympics. Do you want to play on that Olympic team? Have you given that some thought? I definitely want to. It's up to them if they want me to. I mean, I would love to, to play with guys and show off my passing even more and not have to go out and score a lot and just be there if they need me to. I mean, I, I respect the, the OGs and understand it's got to take your turn, but I believe I, I should be Thank on you. there. You see that list, man, they got, man? Oh, sorry. Group. Trae Young is telling the world he wants to be at least a part of the Team USA camp. He wants at least a shot at making the roster. For whatever reason though, a 25 year old two time all star who is exactly the type of star power that Team USA needs was left at home and instead of showcasing a team of our brightest talent, instead of showcasing Zion, Ja, Trey and Lamella, we have seen Walker Kessler. Austin Reeves, Josh Hart, and Cam Johnson. Four players who are awesome NBA role players, but this is the Olympic team. And if we look at the difference in stats between these four players, it is no contest. The veterans of Team USA include Bobby Portis, who is a former bull. He is an NBA champ. He is an incredible vet. But where are the veterans who will actually be on the senior Olympic team leading these young guys? Why did the best American players in the world sit on the sidelines as they watch Team USA fall to Lithuania as the Lithuania players danced in their faces? The answer is one that could lead to the one thing that every American fan should be fearing and one thing every international fan is waiting for. Because if this continues, do we really expect the United States to win the gold medal game in the Olympics? Do we even expect them to get there? So what's up guys, Mike here, and all we hear is that the rest of the world has caught up and that Team USA should be afraid. If that is the case, why is Team USA not working harder than ever to keep America as the number one basketball team in the world. Right now, according to the FIBA world rankings, the United States is actually second to Spain, as it is very clear that every other country is working so hard to take down the Americans to win the Olympic gold medal. Are Americans above winning gold medals? RJ Barrett recently danced with literal joy after Canada just qualified for the Olympics. You'd think the Knicks just made the playoffs. But before we continue, guys, I am very very excited to thank DraftKings for sponsoring today's video. Because if you may not have noticed, the National Football League is back, and I've partnered with DraftKings Sportsbook to hook you guys up. DraftKings Sportsbook is an official sports betting partner of the NFL, and again, Sundays are for football. I'm a basketball man, but I can admit that. So new customers, all you have to do is bet $5 on any wager, and you will instantly receive $200 in bonus bets. And going even further, you can use those bonus bets on a chance at same game parlays to get an even bigger payout. And if sports betting is still not available in your state, do not worry. You can still join in on all the fun with DraftKings Daily Fantasy, where you're going to have a shot to win cash prizes. So don't wait any longer. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now. New customers, use my promo code Corzemba, bet $5 on any wager, and immediately get $200 in bonus bets. As promo code Corzemba, only at DraftKings Sportsbook. Thank you, DraftKings, for supporting the channel and for now, let's get back to the video. We know for a fact, if Team USA takes a fat loss, suddenly all anyone will do is care and say, let's save Team USA, what has happened? So why is there not more of that urgency before the failure? I'm American and I understand. Olympic basketball teams are built on great systems, but the problem is when Team USA decides to lean too much into their own system, we've watched twice already as that has ended in utter failure. History always repeats itself, we know this. And what history has told us is that when Team USA management or the coaches try to build too much of a team slash fit structure and they don't get enough star power, Team USA goes down. Look at what happened in 2004 before we needed to send in the Redeem team. The United States then failed to win it all at the Olympic Games. 
There'll be no gold in Athens. Look at the joy on the Argentinian faces and the disappointment in the United States. The United States men's basketball team had only lost twice. Looking back at that 2004 team, the United States was well aware that they could lose the gold medal. In the 2000 Olympics, Jason Kidd said, we all talked about it, how we would have felt if we had lost. You could see the world getting better. And so the players decided to take this very seriously, especially because in the 2002 FIBA World Basketball Championship, the United States did not play for the gold medal game. They finished sixth. The thing is though, after being humbled by these three losses, the United States prepared, they sent over all of the best talent in the NBA, and they built a squad that was ridiculous. This roster had Jason Kidd, Ray Allen, Vince Carter, Tracy McGrady, Jermaine O'Neal, and Elton Brand, on top of having players such as Tim Duncan and Allen Iverson that would play in the 2004 Olympics. All of these NBA superstars playing together at the same time beat the rest of the world by over 30 points and they went 10 and 0. Is the rest of the world really that close when the United States sends over the top of the top talent. I'm not sure when we've seen that. We've seen guys like Walker Kessler taken out, not guys like a prime Jason Kidd, Ray Allen, and T Mac. Now, after going 10 0 in the 2003 qualifying tournament, the plan was to keep this entire roster only. USA Basketball CEO Jim Cooley said, Listen, it was a tough circumstance. I would never want to throw a coach under the bus here and say, You know, it's all on you. And that is the quote. That is essentially what everyone has said. The blame has fallen on. Larry Brown, the coach, but really it's not all on him because Team USA gave him absurd roster power and control. Richard Jefferson, a member of that Olympic team said this, I think Larry Brown tried to use the Team USA as a tool. He was trying to do something for the game of basketball and trying to put out a certain style of play and a certain style of message versus us just going out there and trying to win games. RJ would go on to talk about how Larry Brown told Jason Kidd to stop at the free throw line on fast breaks. That is something a coach from the 1950s would suggest. This is a constant in basketball. This is a constant in all of sports. When the coach or management takes too much power and the players don't respect that, everything crumbles. We lost the 2004 Olympics because, as Richard Jefferson said, truth be told, that's probably why nine guys decided that they didn't want to go do the Olympics. It was that simple. Larry Brown's tyrancy allowed multiple players to use the excuse of security concerns or the fact that they were getting married to get out of Team USA. Now, I believe in love and I believe in security, but these were excuses. The real reason was that no one wanted to play for Larry Brown. Unfortunately, that is currently what's happening in Team USA. If you are just not inviting Trey Young or LaMelo Ball for no reason to not be a part of what you are doing, my question is, why? Looking back, the birth of the 1992 original Dream Team only took place because again of the ridiculous roster control of John Thompson in 1988. But let's look at those guys on that 1992 Dream Team roster. Larry Bird fought every single player on a basketball court ever. Magic Johnson had one of the biggest scandals of all time and was not allowed to play in the NBA, but he still played in the Olympics. Michael Jordan was in Atlantic City during the Eastern Conference Finals. Charles Barkley threw people through windows and spit on children. Loved Chuck, but it happened. Carl Malone is an awful human being. That was our dream team. What standard are we suddenly holding everyone to? Zion is fat, so he can't be invited? Come on. We never used to hold our younger players to such an impossible standard. If anything, the structure and honor of playing for Team USA used to help these younger players gain more discipline. And everyone who has been a part of that Team USA structure has said they benefited tremendously from it when it was run by the right guy. You can see the birth of the 1992 original dream team took place, of course, because we lost, but also, why did we lose? No one ever asked that because no one ever wants to throw John Thompson, the Hall of Fame coach, under the bus. But in 1988, Team USA ended up losing to the Soviet Union in the semifinals by six points as Georgetown guard Charles Smith, who would play in just 73 NBA games in his entire career, would play 34 minutes for Team USA in that loss, while future Hall of Famer Mitch Richmond played just 14, and future Hall of Famer Tim Hardaway was sitting at home. John Thompson Thompson chose his own point guard over Hall of Famer Tim Hardaway and longtime sharpshooter slash college All-American Steve Kerr, and somehow all of the players were blamed. If the best players play on the 1988 Olympics team, I do think we win the gold medal. I, of course, love the Dream Team, so I do not mind that that happened. However, history repeats itself. I've said it before in this video. I'll say it again right now. In 1984, the seeds were already planted. Bob Knight sent future Hall of Famer Charles Barkley home just because. He just didn't fit into Bob Knight 
Knight system, so he had to go. While Bob Knight's own freshman point guard, Steve Alford, a man who would play in less than 200 NBA games, was chosen instead of Charles Barkley. That was ridiculous at the time. This is ridiculous. If the rest of the world has caught up, great. Let's send over our best of the best then and go to battle with the best players we have. I love international basketball, but I want to see Team USA represent the best way they can. Basketball is supposed to be America's sport. Why are we giving it away? Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you're American, I know you're with me. If you're not American, you know, I'm just trying to put on for my boys. I'm American. I want Team USA to win. If you're from another country, if you rep another country, of course, support your boys. Support the takedown of Team USA. I'm with you. This is sports, but Team USA, let's get it together. Rambling a bit. I'm passionate. Thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you're new to the channel, make sure to subscribe and turn on post notifications. That way you can offset any international hate. Just kidding. Hopefully, if you're already subscribed, thank you so much for supporting. You're awesome. We all know it. And as always, have an awesome day. And cue that music. If you're still here while the music is cued, here are two videos I think you are definitely going to enjoy. I mean, personally, I think the one on the left might be more your style, but the one on the right looks pretty awesome too. Click one, let me know what you think. And again, have an awesome day.